Hi, I'm Stephanie and I'm the Fade Microbiologist at Ward Laboratories. And for today's Tuesday Thoughts, I'm gonna to talk to you about aflatoxin. So aflatoxin is a type of mycotoxin that's produced by the mold species Aspergillus. Um, Aspergillus is most commonly associated with corn. Um, it also can be growing on crops such as peanuts or cotton, but corn is kind of what we tend to focus on because that's what we're using most often in feeds. So Aspergillus grows very well in warmer, humid conditions. Um, it will produce aflatoxin when it's been introduced to some type of environmental stressor, most commonly linked with the weather. So if we're going from high humidity to a drier drought, that's when you've got your greatest potential for aflatoxin production. It's kind of segueing us into then when to test for aflatoxins. Any time you have that kind of seasonal change in your area from high humidity to dry drought, that's what a good indicator that you might need to be testing for aflatoxin. Um, some other indicators would be symptoms of illness amongst your livestock and hopefully you don't have to rely on that as your only indicator, but um, some acute symptoms would be something like vomiting or weakness or just generally slow. Some chronic symptoms would be feed refusal, not gaining weight the way they should be, um, very slow, very fatigued, very weak, anything like that. So not only do you need to know when to test for aflatoxin, but also how to test for aflatoxin and how to take a sample. So if you have your feed as a whole, a lot of times I'll see people make the mistake of they see the mold present in one area and that's what they want to test. That's not a great idea because it doesn't give you a great representation of everything as a whole, um, which is what you want. You want your results to reflect what you will be feeding. Um, Another mistake people will make is just not sending us enough sample. So 25 grams is kind of what you want to be your minimum of sample that you send in. Uh, anything less isn't going to give you a good representation and good results. Um, so more is always better than less, but 25 grams is going to be what you want to hit the mark at. Um, another thing you want to be aware of with mycotoxins and aflatoxin is that just because the mold isn't present doesn't mean that the aflatoxin or mycotoxin isn't present. So if you have a scenario where a feed has been in storage for a certain amount of time and mold was present at some point of time in that storage duration, or if there was maybe just the conditions at some point were maybe good for mold, um, mold growth, you could still have potential for the mycotoxin or aflatoxin to be present even if the mold has died off by the time you go to feed it. So unfortunately, aflatoxins and mycotoxins do not degrade over time. So just because the mold isn't there anymore doesn't mean that the toxins aren't going to be there anymore. And conversely, just because the mold is there doesn't mean that the mycotoxin or aflatoxin is going to be present. You've got to have that extra stress condition to kind of get them, get the aspergillus or get the mold thinking about producing any type of extra toxin. So that's kind of just a summary to hit some main points of when and why to test for aflatoxin. Um, we do do aflatoxin testing at Ward Laboratories. It's $25 per sample. Um, if you have any other questions about aspergillus or aflatoxin or just mold and mycotoxins in general, feel free to call in. I would be more than happy to help you with your questions. Just ask for Stephanie and we can talk through things. Um, also feel free to comment on this video or send me an email. Thanks for listening.